Hello, welcome to Maths Kitchen. Today we're looking at multiplying. In particular, I've got a nice, quick, easy method for multiplying decimals. It's called Napier's Bones. So this is really, really useful for that non-calculator GCSE paper that's coming up soon. And as I've done with a few of my recent videos, I've got a section on my website, which is mathskitchen.com, where you can practice the skills that I'm gonna show you today. And they get marked instantly, and there are model answers. So if you make a mistake or you just get stuck, you can see exactly where you went wrong or, or what it is you need to do next. So do go and check that out, mathskitchen.com. Right, let's get into it. So the first example, 47 times 821. We're gonna be writing our numbers across the top and down the right hand side of a grid. And each digit needs its own column or row. So the grid will look like this. You can see I've got space for two numbers across the top and three numbers down the right hand side. The next step is to draw diagonal lines going from the top right to the bottom left across each square. The next step is to write one number across the top and one of them down the right hand side. It doesn't matter which goes on top, you'll end up with the same answer either way. So you should now have a grid that looks like this. And in fact, by now you've actually done a lot of the hard work. That's the first stage completed. The second stage is multiplying the numbers together inside the grid. And all you do is look at each square and multiply the number at the top of the grid by the number on the right hand side. So the first box will be four times eight, which is 32. The second box will be seven times eight, which is 56. Moving on to the second row, the first box is four times two, which is eight. Now, when you have this situation, when your answer only has one digit, you write in zero in the first part of the box, and then the eight or whatever your number is in the second part, just like that. The next one is seven times two, which is 14. Put that in and we're onto the third row. Four times one is four. The answer is just one digit again. So we put a zero in at the start, zero, four, like that. And the final box is seven times one, which is seven. So the same thing again, we'll write in the zero followed by seven. So that's stage two done. Stage three, the final stage, is to add those numbers up inside our grid, but we do it in a particular way. We now ignore the boxes, and instead we just focus on the diagonal columns. You can see I'm highlighting those there. We begin at the bottom right and add up everything in the first diagonal. In fact, there's only one number in the first diagonal, so we just write that underneath. The second one highlighted there is four, add four, which is eight. The next one is six, add one, add eight, add zero, which is 15. Now, we have a two digit answer here. So what you do is you write the last digit, in this case, the five underneath, and you carry the one over to the next diagonal, just like you would do if you were doing column addition, for example, that same technique. I write them in the, the next diagonal like that. So our next diagonal is five, add two, add zero, which is seven, but we must also remember to add on the one that we just carried. So we get eight for that diagonal. And then the last diagonal is just three. We're more or less done now, actually. All we do is write the numbers down from outside the grid, starting from the top left, going around to the bottom right. The ones I've written in red, in other words. Three, eight, five, eight, seven. So 47 times 821 is 38,587. Right, the next example, and we're into the decimals. The great thing is that the method is basically identical uh, with just one little bit added at the end. We're gonna do 8.2 times 0 0.23. Right, so I set it all out exactly as in the previous ones. In fact, I don't even put the decimal points in until the end. So it really is exactly the same. The grid with the eight and two across the top and the zero, two, three down the right hand side. Then I carry out all the multiplication inside. And once that's complete, I add the diagonals up just as I did before. So we have six for the first one, eight for the second. The third diagonal adds to eight as well. And the next one is just one, and then the final one is zero. 
So, so far it hasn't been any different to the previous examples. Here's the only different bit. We now put in the decimal points and then we take a line coming down from the decimal point at the top between the eight and the two and we take a line across from the decimal point between the zero and the two on the right hand side. And we extend those lines far enough so that they cross over as they do there. Now we follow the diagonal down from the place where they cross over and it will point to where the decimal point should be in our answer. In this case, in between the one and the eight. So now we write down our answer starting at the top left, 0, 01.886. And in fact, there's no need for that first zero. So I would just write it out and just say 1.886. So 8.2 times 0 0.23 is 1.886. The last thing is to check but it's roughly the answer we were expecting. And to do that, I just round each of the numbers off to one significant figure. So 8.2, I'll round off to eight, and 0 0.23, I'll round off to 0 0.2. And I know that eight times two is 16, so eight times 0 0.2 is gonna be 10 times smaller than 16. In other words, it's gonna be 1.6. So the answer should be somewhere in the region of 1.6, and it is, isn't it? 1.886 is pretty close to 1.6. If we ended up with one, oh, sorry, if we ended up with 18.86 or 188.6, something like that, we would know we've gone wrong somewhere. And we would just have to go back, check we've put our decimal points in the correct place and that we've followed the diagonal down correctly. The final question then, 63 times 8.6. Let's do a quick estimate around the 63 off to 60 and the 8.6 up to nine. Well, six times nine is 54, so 60 times nine will be 10 times bigger, 540. So we have a rough idea of what the answer should be. Right, so we're gonna do everything the same. We'll draw our grid with the numbers across the top and down the side, and we'll fill in the grid with the multiplication before completing the addition around the grid, uh, not forgetting to carry the numbers if appropriate. And I just wanted to show you this because knowing where to put the decimal point might not be immediately obvious with these ones if you haven't seen them before. So we can see the decimal point between the eight and the six. And we follow that across, but there isn't a decimal point in the 63. If there was one, it would be after the three. It would be 63.0, if you like. So we, if we were to follow that a line coming down, it would come down after that three. So we'd follow that down until it meets the line coming across from the 8.6 and they would meet there. So we follow that diagonal down from there and it's pointing us to between the one and the eight, which gives us 541.8. And comparing that with our estimate at the start, which is 540, that sounds pretty good. So that's it, a nice method for multiplying numbers, in particular multiplying decimals. Uh, I hope you found it useful. And don't forget, as I mentioned, head over to mathskitchen.com. You can practice the skills that I showed you today, but in fact, there's loads of other useful revision GCSE resources there. So please do go and check that out, mathskitchen.com. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in next week's video.